Hey guys, welcome back to Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl, where we interview top-level MMA fighters and other experts in their fields about love, dating, romance, and that all-too-taboo subject, sex. I'm your host, Ashley Rebel Girl, Evan Smith. Now let's talk about sex and violence. What's up, all my naughty listeners? I figured I would start this episode with a funny story, a personal funny story. So, um... Last week, I was doing a podcast for Abel, actually, at Black Belt uh, Krav Maga, Black Belt Collective in Huntington Beach. That's where we were, you know, temporarily shooting the podcast. And uh, anyway, I did his podcast, which is called The Boiler Room, I believe. And I got all girly and dressed up. And uh, if you're familiar, if you're a girl, you probably know this. But guys, if you can't, if you have a shirt that... um, you know, you can't wear like a bra with, you usually wear something called pasties with little nipple cover things. And so I was wearing some pasties and uh, I did the interview and then I went tanning afterwards because as I've been talking uh, talking about, my boyfriend and I are going to go to Florida on a little uh, work vacation and I want to get that base tan, I guess. <laughs> so I'm laying in the tanning bed and about halfway through the tanning session I realized that I forgot to take off those pasties <laughs> and so uh, you know pasties they come in different shapes and sizes you get like you know circu- circles you get hearts and you know you can get abstract and have like marijuana leaves if you're into that kind of thing and uh, anyway I just had circles <laughs> but halfway through the session I'm like oh forgot to take off the pasties so basically you can imagine the tan lines that I have right about now (laughs) I guess uh new boobs new problems but yeah that's it for titty talk I just thought I'd tell you guys about that uh back to the show so uh what I want to do this week and kind of continuing on is I want to try to make a connection with you guys the people that are actually listening to the show and uh, you know every week I'm sending these interviews out into the universe and I'm just starting to wonder, are they landing? Are they affecting you guys? Are they making an impact? Are they making a difference? And I've asked you guys to write reviews and I really appreciate that. That helps a lot. Please continue to do that. But we also have an email and that's ashley at sexandviolencepodcast.com. So what I'm asking is I want your feedback. If you've you know, if you're a fan of the show, if you have any questions, if you liked anything, anything at all, you know, even if you think there's something that I can improve on, email me. It's Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-E, at sexandviolencepodcast.com. And actually, this week is a little different. There's no UFC fights tomorrow, and it's, it feels kind of sad, you know, but I guess we could talk about the card on the following week, which is uh, UFC Vegas 23. The main event is Darren Till versus Marvin Vittori. Actually, I just heard that Darren Till had to pull out, uh, which is super sad because, well, any you know, anytime a fighter has to pull out, it's sad. But uh, Marvin Vittori has had, I think he holds the record for opponents, most opponents that have like pulled out due to injury or COVID. Um, poor guy. It's so frustrating to put so much work and heart and sacrifice into something and then just have it be taken away last minute so I feel for him but the rest of the card is looking pretty good I wonder who they're gonna bump up to the main event it's Arnold Allen versus Sadiq Yusuf uh, go Sadiq Sam Alvey versus Julian Marquez Sam Alvey was our second guest ever and we're here now on episode 45 so that's pretty awesome Uh, Nina Anzaroff which is she was also a guest I think it was like in the teens or whatever, but she's fighting Mackenzie Dern, and this is her first fight back since having a baby, and I'm really excited to see. So, actually, Mackenzie Dern's a mom, Nina's a mom, maybe that's why they matched them up, I don't know, <laughs> but it's going to be a great fight. Both women are amazing athletes, and, um, you know, regardless of having a baby. Then we got Mike Perry versus Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, D-Rod is someone who trains with Joe Schilling at the yard, which I started training at a little bit for my last fight. So definitely rooting for (laughs) D-Rod. Me and the boyfriend always call him the foo of the UFC. And if you guys ever follow uh, Foo's Gone Wild on Instagram, if you don't, you should. It's uh, 
very hilarious. There's a lot of humor around the Mexican and Latin community, and uh, Foo's gone wild. Uh, so yeah, Daniel D. Rod is the Foo of the UFC in a good way. <laughs> and then on the prelims, we've got Jim Miller versus Joel Solecki. Um, Scott Holtzman versus, oh, I don't know how to say his last name, Gamarot. And then Norma Dumont versus Bay Malecki. Norma is the girl that I just fought um, in November. It was my last fight. Didn't go my way. Um, but this girl, you know, she's strong. Uh, she hits like a freaking truck. And hopefully she makes weight. That's not me being salty. I'm just, you know, it would be nice if she would make weight because that's, in my opinion, the first part of being a professional. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know who's going to win that one. I've heard good things about uh, Bay Malecki, just a tall glass of water. And then last on the card is Jerice Dehano versus Jorgen De Castro. And Jorgen De Castro, just a very, very nice guy. You know, you meet people along the way in this journey, whether it's when you're an athlete or work for the UFC or whatever. You're traveling, you're meeting people from all walks of life, all over the world. And I forget where this guy's from, but he's from a very small island where he's like... <laughs> I think like the only MMA fighter, but um, Jorgen De Castro. I hope he wins. Anyway, all right. So the last thing I want to talk about uh, before we get into our, our guest is the UFC uh, starting April 1st uh, or starting, actually, I think it's like this next card, the one we were just talking about, April 10th. It's going to be um, the first time that Venom is taking over for Reebok. And I actually got an email this morning, so I'll share it with you guys. Uh, UFC athletes will officially wear the new Venom-designed fight kits. Please note Reebok will continue to supply footwear, but all other fight week kits and fight night outfitting will be provided by Venom. Also, starting April 1st, an updated UFC promotional guidelines incentive program goes into effect. I read that this morning. Uh, the most significant updates to the program are as follows. One, adjustments to the fight week incentive payments resulting in an increase for both uh, for all tier athletes, which is awesome, more money. And then uh, two, new guidelines around masks and a uh, new approved process for mouth guards. And lastly, an added program for memorial wristbands. So the memorial wristbands, I had to, you know, research this because it sounds very, very sweet. And, um, you know, I personally dedicated my last fight to Nico Jackson, who had passed away. And so, um, you know, this might be something that I would have done if it was around a few months ago. Memorial wristbands, um, they may include the full name or initials of the individual being memorialized and the birth and death dates. There's two size wristbands and only the fighter may wear the memorial wristband. And, you know, I'm imagining that's such a cool feeling, you know, getting your hand raised and then having the wristband with your, you know, your loved one or, or your, you know, um, you know, whoever passed away on your wrist. It's a pretty cool idea. And then I did look up all the new tier systems. I won't go into great detail, but basically, you know, if you have one UFC fight to five UFC fights, you make a certain amount of money, right? And then it increases from there. And um, each each of us, no matter where we're at on the scale, kind of got either a $500 increase or a $1,000 increase. The champion, I think, gets a $2,000 pay bump. But, um, but yeah, more money, always a good thing. I don't know what the Venom outfits will look like. I have, I have some hope, you know. Reebok was... It's all right. It was pretty plain. Um, as long as it's not bedazzled, you know, like the old tap out and uh, what was it? Tap out? Affliction. As long as it's not a bedazzled, I think I'll be OK. Um, but yeah, what's going on with me? Same old, same old guys. Like I said, getting ready for, ready for the Florida trip. Um, you know, we're going to go out there, do the Craig Jones seminar. The boyfriend's going to do the seminar. I'm still healing from the spine surgery, so won't be able to participate, but I'll be there to support. And, you know, we're just going to lounge on the beach and relax for a little bit, you know, still be working, but uh, work vacation. And I will definitely need to take my sunscreen. A Botanical Bloom does not have a sunscreen yet, but what they do have are some amazing products. And they have a lip balm, a vapor rub, um, all sorts of products, and they're all made from real CBD, not hemp seed oil. All their products are also lab tested and have uh, proof right there on the label uh, and it directs you 
um, that QR code directly to the site. So you can um, check all the tests. They've got lip balms, vapor rubs, tinctures, gummies, um, and a CBD method that is now my favorite since we are in a pandemic, hand sanitizer. Go follow them at A Botanical Bloom on Facebook and Instagram, or check out their website at www.abotanicalbloom.com. And please use code AshleyMMA and you'll get 20% off on all those cool products. Today's guest is a UFC ring girl, or rather an octagon girl. But long before she catwalked around the octagon, she'd been gracing stages for cheer, gymnastics, beauty pageants, and modeling at as young as 11 years old. The Alaska-born, Vegas-raised beauty had a chance meeting while cocktailing at a downtown bar at 21 years old. It was then that she met Dana White of the UFC and was asked to be an octagon girl. We talk about going from waitress to ring girl, holding up the wrong cards, being shy with an outgoing alter ego, who she thinks the hottest fighters are, quickie sex on a hike, her love of dirty talk, and so much more. Here is your guest, Brooklyn Wren. Okay, and now we have our first UFC octagon girl. Brooklyn, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. How have you been? I know it's been a crazy year, but how's life? Um, everything's actually pretty good. I think for me, I was a little bit um, annoyed at the beginning of the pandemic because a lot of things were going on for me and then everything just kind of stopped. But <clears throat> um, I think for me, the pandemic kind of let me take a step back and like really find out who I was and the things that I wanted and everything like that. And then I think really good things started happening for me. So um, it's, been a, it's been an interesting time, but I think still good at the same time. Awesome. I mean, the UFC fights did stop for a little while, so I, I'm sure that put a tamper in work for you, but then they picked up. <clears throat> And so, mm -hmm. do you have any other jobs that you do besides being an Octagon girl? Yeah, so I model, and I just recently got signed to a new agency in LA. Um, and then I also went to school last year for um, laser tech, which is like hair removal, tattoo removal, cool sculpting, skin tightening, all those things. Um, and so I just got hired somewhere for that as well. That's awesome. I actually, uh, I got spine surgery in December and I have this uh, oh, wow. scar on the front of my neck and it's about mm, two quarters, I guess, that length. And I got my first IPL. Is that what it's called? Yeah. IPL. Yeah. So I got the first little laser um, IPL and then I guess you have to wait every like three or five weeks, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could already tell the difference. So I'm really excited. So that's cool that you're certified in that. Yeah, I really, really like it. So I'm going to ask you a very cheesy question, but I'm sure you get it a lot. But what's it like being a UFC ring girl? Um, it's, it's crazy to think, honestly, because it happened so randomly. And so um, when I started, I had no clue what to expect. And sometimes, like, when you're used to it, you're just like, oh, I have to go to work. Like, that's what a lot of us say. We'll be like, oh, we have to work tomorrow. And you don't think about it as much until you like hear people talking about it a lot or people be like oh I see you on tv or you see like billboards and stuff and you're like wow I really work for <laughs> this huge organization um but I love it it's so much fun I work with like the coolest people and you know I've gotten to travel so many places and watch like the best fights so I mean I love it were you always a, an MMA fan or <clears throat> did you start when you started um, working for the UFC <laughs> Yeah, I kind of started when I started working for UFC just because um, I would always see the fights when I, because I used to like work in hospitality, like restaurants and things like that. Um, and so I would see the fights or like one of my friends, he used to watch the fights like every day. And I was just like, oh my God, that's way too much blood or something <laughs> like that. And then it's so weird because when I first started or when I worked my first fight, I was like so much more into it in person than I was watching it on TV. Like I can watch all that stuff. The only thing that I cannot handle watching is like an arm bar. I can't, <laughs> I can't look at it. <laughs> Everything else is fine. Yeah. Any joint manipulations you can do rear naked chokes and ground and pound, yeah. but no arm bars, huh? <laughs> 
no arm bars. Yeah, I will tell the girls. I'm like, I'll like cover my eyes, and I'm like, tell me when it's over. Tell, tell me it's over. <laughs> So how how did you become a ring card girl? I mean, did you, you know, contact the UFC, fill out an application, go on an interview? Um, actually, I was cocktailing, um, and I met Dana there. Um, and then anytime he would come in, I was always his server. And then like eight months after I met him, um, I brought them their drinks, and he was he asked me if I modeled. And I told him that I did, and then he asked me if I wanted to be an octagon girl. And I was like, sure. <laughs> and then, like, he had me come into headquarters, like, the next week. And then I think two weeks later, I was in Kansas City working my first fight. Wow, that's amazing. Just like a chance meeting, yeah. I guess. I know. That's awesome. And so you've yeah. done a lot of things. I did my research on you, cheer and gymnastics and modeling and mm -hmm. beauty pageants. So you're no mm -hmm. stranger to being in front of the lights and something you said earlier, you said, Oh, I just kind of used to it. I know that it's kind of similar with my job. People are like, wow, you're a UFC fighter. That's so exciting. But then yeah. I'm like, yeah, I guess like I'm, I'm used to it now. I've had, Oh shoot. Let's see. I think like eight UFC fights, you know, 11 total yeah. fights, but I still get nervous, you know, um, right before mm -hmm. I walk out, I get that nervous. So, I know you're not fighting, but do you get nervous or anxious before you, you know, do your walk around the octagon? Uh, no. And it's so funny. I, I'm not sure why I've never been nervous about it. Um, I think the only thing that's ever made me nervous was the, my first band because I didn't know what to do with my face. <laughs> like, Ricky Bobby oh, moment. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't sure who I was supposed to be looking at, like, and then it was just, I, you know, now we know when the cameras are on us, like, we can kind of, like, glance over at the screen, and then we'll know if the cameras are on us or not, but my first one, I didn't, we were outside at, in Kansas City, so I didn't know what to do at all, and people were just staring at you, but, like, my first fight um, in Kansas City, I, it didn't bother me at all walking around the ring. I think the most things that I get nervous about are like if I trip this is going to be so embarrassing or like <laughs> what if I hold up the wrong number and <laughs> things like that but <laughs> have you ever done anything like that Hel held up the wrong yes, number yes I have oh do tell please <laughs> oh my god that happens to me twice <laughs> oh no <laughs> I was like wow I'm getting tired um you had one job Brooklyn I one job <laughs> <laughs> one job the easy job <laughs> um I went to, it was out here, and we were at the Palms, and um, I went to the bathroom, and I came back, and it was my turn to walk, and we always try to keep the cards in order, and there was only two of us working that fight, so I assumed, like, as soon as I walked back into the arena, it was my time to go, so I assumed that the card in front was the right round, and so I just picked it up and started walking, and <laughs> I heard someone yelling, like, number five, number five, but I was holding up number four, so I'm like, what are they talking, who are they talking to? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, nobody said anything after, so I was like, okay, <laughs> like, God, like, someone's going to call me and be like, oh, you're fired, but <laughs> nothing happened, and then the next time that it happened, um, up on top, you know, where they, uh, in between rounds, where they have the number of, in the arenas, like, it'll be, like, round three or whatever, so I saw round three. So I picked up the car that was round three, but it was really round two. And I'm like, why did you guys, <laughs> why do you guys hate me? Uh, so but nobody said anything again. So I guess nobody noticed. I've noticed know. that I've, I've been watching the fights, you know, at home and like ESPN or, you know, Fox or whatever, like they put the wrong like name, you know, the person's walking out. Like yeah. it's very rare, but I'm just like, every time I'm like, you had one job, come on. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh. And I always say that. I'm like, people already are just always like, oh, they're only good for showing their bodies. And I'm like, oh, look at me holding up the wrong numbers like the easiest. Oh, please. I, I'm a fighter and I've made some very um, bad decisions. And yeah, holding up the wrong number is, uh, if that's the worst you've done, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> I mean, there's been girls that have had nip slips or, you know, the guys that oh, kind of, yeah. you know, they get on the scale butt naked and they don't even care. They're just all out <laughs> of it. Like, oh, it could be worse, Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, my God. So what is your favorite part about being an Octagon girl? Um, I really, really love watching, like, the coolest fights. Like, I just, 
I've gotten to work some really, really good sites. But I really do love, like, traveling and meeting the fans. And I love the people that I work with. Like, I was really, really nervous when I first started because I don't actually think that they were hiring when I when they hired me. Um, and I was nervous that the girls wouldn't want a new girl. I didn't know how the fans would take me. And when I came in, everybody was like, oh, my God, we've been waiting to meet you. We're so excited. And they were like, let's take pictures. We need to get your followers. <laughs> like, everybody was just like, all the girls have, like, always helped me with anything. If I, you know, they've set me up with, like, their contacts, agency, like, anything. They've We've always just been, like, everybody was, like, really welcoming when I first started. And so I love that. It made it an, a really easy transition. And I love traveling, so yeah. <laughs> and that's been fun, too. I mean, when you travel with someone, so or you know, the other girls. How, by the way, how many total Octagon girls are there? Um, <clears throat> working in the space right now, I there's. Sorry, let me bring up my camera so you can see. I think there's seven of us seven? in the states. I'm not sure exactly how many are overseas right now. Um, I know. I think there's like three off the top of my head I can think of, but I'm not sure how many are overseas. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say that when you travel so much and, and work with someone, you get really close. So it's like your second family almost. Do you, do you get that, that vibe with the UFC and the other girls? <clears throat> yeah, like I said, it's, they were like that from day one. Like they would always invite me out and, and do all these things. And I'm I'm actually really, really shy. So a lot of the times I would just kind of stay back in the hotel and be like, oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> But I started trying to, like, break out of that at some point. Um, so, yeah, it's because it's, it could have gone one of two ways. I mean, when you work with girls, it could be, like, a, a chatty vibe mm -hmm. where, you know, they're just not accepting you or welcoming. But it was never like that with them. So um, I'm really glad about that. Yeah, you said you're shy, but I feel like. I'm just assuming that if someone's done all the things you've done, cheer and gymnastics and, you know, all the stage stuff, uh, beauty pageants, like you kind of would um, obtain this sense of, uh, you know, just confidence over the years. But why do you think you're so shy? I'm definitely confident. Like I have, <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird to explain myself. I don't know. It's so, it's such a weird thing. Like I'm, I'm very confident in myself and who I am and like my looks. Like I just, I'm very comfortable with myself, but. I am very shy. Like, I'm not a person that's going to go up and, like, talk to you first or, like, start conversations with random people. I'm just, like, very quiet when I'm around a bunch of new people. Okay. Um, and it's, like, really kind of unless you start talking to me first, I probably won't say anything. Um, but it's weird because when I'm in that element, like, if I'm in my – doing my job or if I'm modeling or – doing cheer and anything like that it's kind of like an alter ego or something I don't yes. know how to explain it no um, I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about <laughs> yeah it's like you have to like turn that on like if the fans want a picture with you or want you to sign something mm -hmm. you're like yeah absolutely and and when I'm modeling <clears throat> I can go from like being like I don't like taking pictures in front of anybody which is so weird I won't take a selfie if someone is watching me <laughs> like, <laughs> But when I'm modeling, I'll take pictures in front of anybody. If I'm doing an actual photo shoot, you know, it's, it's weird because everybody always asks me, like, oh, did you want always want to be in the, the spotlight or the center of attention? I'm like, I actually hate being the center of attention. <laughs> it's just, like, something else turns on when I'm, like, working. It's just a different side of me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you said it perfectly. It's kind of like your alter ego. It's, you know, if you're yeah. the, normally Brooklyn's this introvert to herself kind of girl when you're modeling or – you know, walking the octagon, you get to kind of be, it's like acting a little bit. You get to be someone that you're yeah. not, right? Yep. It's yeah. exactly like acting, but with no words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you do a great job. So you Thank are you. traveling a lot. And then you also said you're not the kind of person that approaches someone and initiates the conversation. So these things, I'm like, mm. oh, and are, are these things that make your dating life difficult? Because for me, I'm like, I'm an outgoing person. I'm going to start the conversation. I'm actually opposite of you. I'm more, I'm actually pretty low self-esteem when it comes to my looks, but I'll just fake it till I make it. But, you know, I'm, I'm personable and, you know, and I'll talk to people. Yeah. So how does that transfer into your dating life? You know, you're traveling all over, you're kind of to yourself. Um. I actually don't mind doing things by myself. So there's been like some cities, like if I get in before one of the other girls and I just 
felt like going somewhere, I would just, like, go to a restaurant by myself. Like, I don't mind doing things alone. I actually love doing things by myself. <laughs> so if someone approaches me, I can have a conversation with anybody. So I'm, like, I might not start the conversation or initiate it, but I'm, like, and I don't actually talk in, like, if it's, like, a big group of people, I'll probably be the one that's, like, sitting back listening but if it's, like, one-on-one, -on -one, I can hold a conversation with anybody. And so when I actually go on dates or things like that, people will be like, wow, you're so different than I imagined. Or you're, like, really down to earth. Or you can really hold a conversation, which I find so weird because I'm, like, it's just, I don't know. I think I talk a lot. And I <laughs> and I, I don't like small talk. And I don't um, – and I think about everything very, very deeply. So having one-on-one -on -one conversations, I actually really like to do. So I actually like to go on dates a lot. <laughs> a lot because I like to know how people's brains work and I like to talk to people and get to know them and all right so are you dating right now are you single are you seeing anyone I'm single but um yeah I've been asked out here and there asked out all right and how do you identify sexually are you straight uh bisexual pansexual I'm um, straight straight Okay, so you're living out in Vegas, you're traveling, you're single. Um, are you kind of looking or are you just kind of letting things happen as they, you know, as they go? Um, I mean, I would love to, like, be in a relationship. It's been, like, two years since my last one, so I would love to be able to find someone. But I also am very big on not settling, and, um, like, I, I kind of know exactly what I want, so... Um, yeah, I think whenever, I think it'll flow naturally when, when that person comes along. So right now I'm just kind of letting it happen how it happens and living my life until then. <laughs> what is it that you want as far as, let's start, let's be shallow first, as far as looks. Do you okay. have, have a type of guy, <laughs> you know, tall, dark, and handsome, short, blonde, and buff? I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you like? It's actually funny because I think my type in my head is not who I ever usually end up dating because I usually... <laughs> It's usually like whoever I, I don't know. I just kind of know when I like someone when I meet them. It's so different than how I pictured in my head. So I rarely end up with guys that are like my quote unquote type. But I do like guys who are tall because I'm five ten. Um, and I love guys with like nice teeth. Yeah, <laughs> like a really nice smile will just get me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just kind of know when I like somebody so looks wise I mean just as long as I find you attractive <laughs> yeah no you're right it's a lot of times it's like okay I like a a big buff tan guy and then it's like mm -hmm. you know if you meet a guy who's not so tan but he's sweet and he treats you're not gonna be like mm -hmm. no no you need to work on your tan yeah. first you know so, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I get it okay what about uh let's be a little more uh Let's, let's talk substance, okay, characteristics, um, career-wise. Do you have, you know, kind of that checklist that, that's important? For me, for example, like I love a guy who's a hard worker. So I'm not saying you have to be a millionaire, but if I can, you know, visually see you working every day towards your goal, right. to me, that's a huge turn-on. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, I've always been really, really, more than anything else, like I've never really been – boy crazy or anything like that I've always been really goal-oriented since I was a kid I've always known what I've wanted and gone after it um and so I love guys like that like I love guys who are passionate about what they do and um so yeah I don't I kind of want someone who's like either already in their career or like yeah kind of someone who's already <laughs> yeah at this point because a lot of times if you have someone who's <clears throat> just starting out or maybe they don't, they don't have a career going, right, and you're doing your own thing, mm -hmm. you, sometimes there's jealousy, uh, you know, oh, you don't, exactly. make, you don't make time for me or this or that. It's like, do your own thing, and then we'll meet up when we meet up, you know. <laughs> or sometimes it'll be like <clears throat> a race. Like they're trying to, like, catch up to you, and then it starts stressing them out, and and then that becomes a problem too. So, yeah, I kind of just want someone who's already – um in it and and someone who is just like successful in whatever they're doing and passionate about it have you ever dated an athlete whether it be fighting or any other type of sport um not professional ones like back when I was younger I dated like high school basketball high player or something <laughs> 
you dated you dated but never a fighter. never a fighter never dated a fighter all right that's what everyone's wondering you know have you dated a fighter <laughs> <laughs> okay next question would you date a fighter i don't think so only because it would i think it would just stress me out like i already <laughs> If there's someone that you're watching that you want to win and something is going wrong, you're, like, <laughs> ringside yelling. I'm like, if I was someone, I would be having a heart attack watching them fight. Yeah, it's not fun. You know, I've, I've done it, and I and I know that, you know, my partner and my loved ones are stressed out when I'm getting ready to fight. It's, it's not normal. Yeah. It's like, to us, it's, you know, <laughs> just another day in the in the office, but um, I yeah. can, it's very stressful for, you know, our loved ones. Um, so is there anything the UFC says that you can't do, you know, have, have they ever told you like, you're not allowed to fraternize with the fighters or kind of, you know, is that a thing? You know, what, what's it called? Like interpersonal, you know, workplace relationships. Do they ever tell you you're not allowed to? Um, no, they never, I've never heard anything like oh, that. Okay. Game on. <laughs> and then <laughs> I noticed you have an only fans. I wasn't sure if mm -hmm. the UFC would allow that kind of thing, but I guess they don't have any say. I mean, they haven't said anything about it. Like, you know, they all they all follow all of us, and and a few of us have one. So, um, nice. They yeah, they haven't said anything. I like your style. Do it. Ask questions later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, how was OnlyFans going for you? You know, a lot of the. Uh, female fighters, a couple guy fighters, a lot of the guests I've had on are using OnlyFans as alternate income. How's it going for you? Yeah, I mean, it's going well. I started mine, like, mid-January. Um, I mean, I guess I could be, like, a little more <laughs> consistent about it, but um, when I get a little busy, I kind of slack off a little bit. But I try to be as consistent as possible. But it's, it's going well, and it is a good source of extra income. Like, I was very – I mean, you know, like, I was nervous to get on it. I was told that I should, like, last summer. And then I was a little bit nervous about it. I was like, oh, I don't know. If I want to do that, um, I don't know how people like what people will think or what. And then I was just like, you know what, I'm grown. Oh, so it's exactly what it is. And and um and I'm like, no one else is paying my bills and no one else is. So, um, I got on there and then once I saw how much I was making, then I was like, oh, I really don't care. What anyone <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like the <clears throat> your worries and kind of that like self self consciousness uh, fades. When you see the payday, you're like, uh, eh, and I don't yeah. care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's good. <laughs> so how often do you work for the UFC? Do you know, do you have like a set schedule? Do they give it to you ahead, you know, like January, this is your year? Or is it kinda like um, they call you randomly? Like they do us fighters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh sometimes it's random, but sometimes we'll know like a couple months in advance. Um, but it's usually it depends how many of us are like well now since um we can't really travel now since the fights are in abu dhabi or vegas <clears throat> we all have to like alternate in vegas so now i'm working like once maybe twice a month mm -hmm. um unless they're in abu dhabi in, in which case the girls from overseas work so uh, but it just depends because there have been times where i've worked like six i've traveled like six weeks in a row oh wow um and then there's been times where I worked like three fights for like three months, three fights a month for like three months in a row. Or there be times where you like don't work for like two months. So it just depends. Yeah. I mean, on I, the schedule. I guess you're happy, though, that they're having crowds now, right? Is Houston the first one that's coming up? Um, Florida. Florida. OK. J uh, Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. So more crowds. You know, does that mean that you'll be able to, you know, work more if, if um, the UFC is going to be able to put on shows in more places? Um, I don't know, because even before um, lockdowns, like our, our how many girls they had at a time changed. So when I came on, there would be like four or five of us on a fight. Um, and then it kind of changed in like 2018 to where only like three of us work a fight at a time. Hmm. So I don't know how it's going to be after they open back up. So I guess we'll just see. Yeah, I guess you're right there with the fighters. We're kind of just like, we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Let's wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I wanted to ask, because you're beautiful, you're around all these fighters, lots, lots of machismo. Um, and then the fans, <laughs> too, can be 
you know, aggressive, they're having a beer. Uh, do you get hit on? I mean, I know that's a yes, but um, what do you do when you get hit on by either a fan or maybe fighters? Um, how often does that happen and what do you do? I'll say this. Um, it doesn't happen as often as you think. Actually, people are way less bold in real life than they are on social media. Uh, yes, yes, and yes, so this is true. <laughs> if, you, if you run into the fans, like when we used to travel a lot and we would like, if the fans would see us out, they wouldn't say anything. They'll just kind of like tweet like, oh, just saw so-and-so in this restaurant. <laughs> but that's like all they would do. Um, some, pe- like, some people will stop you on the street, but they're usually really, really nice in person. It's very rare that you'll get like, someone that's like rude or or nasty or aggressive in real life mm-hmm. um on social media is a whole other story they are <laughs> they're different in in your dms and in your comments oh the no fighters, um i don't think i've ever been hit on by a fighter in person really they're always really nice yeah not even like in a respectful way like brooklyn you looking damn good <laughs> you know <laughs> Not that I can think of. They're always just, like, really nice to me, but... They're probably um, too hungry and too, you know, too... <laughs> <laughs> We're just not ourselves but until, like, after weigh-ins and then, like, our brain cells start working again. Yeah. We're like, okay. Oh, look, there's a pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said yeah, you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're not getting hit on by, you know, the guys too much, or, you know, a little bit of the fans. Are you online dating? Like, how are these interactions... How are you dating? Because you said you're a little bit you won't make the first move. So do you rely on, you know, online dating apps? Um, no, I'm not on any. Um, I did just sign up for one just to see what it was like, but it's one that you like have to get like approved for and they have to go through a whole process. I think I know, I won't put you on blast, but I like, I think I know what you're (laughs) talking about. You have to have like a certain degree or like make a certain amount, certain amount of money, something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or well, like be, be like somebody. Yeah. Be somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. How do you put that in a uh, nice way? Like no losers allowed. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just wanted to see what it was like because I've never done anything like that. And I just thought it would be like fun to do, but yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> I do have people, I mean, I have, I get, I can't even tell you how many DMs. Like, it's, it's not like there's like a, a shortage of <laughs> requests. Of, like, I, it's, <laughs> me, um, like getting dates or something like that is not really an issue. It just is a matter of like me liking people. Yeah. That's always the big, I rarely like people. <laughs> um, but, but, um, when I drink, I'm the complete opposite of myself. So, like, I'm very friendly with everybody. I'm trying to get everybody to, like, drink and dance. And I'm, like, <laughs> it's just, like, a whole other side of me comes out. So, I mean, I, on Sunday, I went out with my sisters in town. And um, I was giving my number out left and right. So, I've had people <laughs> text me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, you know, that sometimes can work for you. You're like, who is this? <laughs> you don't yeah, remember no, me? That's literally how I was. I was like, I was like, who is this, Brittany? And she was like, Oh, that's the one. And I was like, oh, Okay. You're like, send pic, please. <laughs> yeah. Like, then I you... couldn't remember until the next day when I was sober, and I was like, oh, Okay, I remember this one. <laughs> so, what are some of those crazy DMs? Because I gotta ask, is it like? you know, the crazy foot weirdos, or is it the, you know, uh, you're so beautiful, or is, what kind of, what kind of people are hitting you up? The people who, um, I get a lot of people who are, like, convinced I'm going to be their wife, whether it's people I know or people I don't know, they're just very convinced. I have people who ask for my underwear, feet (laughs) pics, I've I've had dick pics and videos, um, and I'm just, yeah, I, I mean, even the things that some people say, it's like I would have to literally go into my DMs right now and read them to you, but <laughs> it's wild in there. Yeah, yeah. What's what's something that, like, stuck at, like has stood out in the DMs? You know, you get the, the creepy guys and you get, you know, the love, undying love, but um, what's something that you're just, like, super weird? 
Like, for example, we had a guest on, <laughs> Nick Dilly, and she was like, yeah, this guy on my OnlyFans requested that I finger my belly button. And I'm like, what? That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> I mean, whatever you're into, buddy. And um, he, he could have asked for other fingerings, I guess. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where, I thought you were going straight for the, you know, he put the belly button. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, God. I, mm, my message requests are always at 99 plus, so I don't even know how many are in there. <laughs> um, so, God, I would really have to, like, think or go back into them to remember, like, specific ones. Because I know if there's, like, a funny one um, that stood out. Oh, there was one I posted on my story not too long ago. I screenshotted it. It was my message request, and this guy said, um, I said, I was on something and I had posted it and then he responded and he said, if you want to be on TV more, I can take you on more because I'm pretty sure I'm having your baby. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to appreciate the witty ones, right? It's like, oh, at least, at least this guy tried. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. I was like, oh, that was a good one. <laughs> so you're obviously, you know, people's celebrity crush. I got to ask you, do you have any celebrity crushes and do you have a fighter crush? It's so funny when people say that because like I don't when I don't even think about myself as like a celebrity. But when people are like, "Oh, you're my celebrity crush," I'm like, "That's so weird." <laughs> to think about. Um, okay, well I'll start with Idris Elba's the "Love of My Life." Even though he's older and he's married, so no disrespect to his wife, but I love him. Yeah, that's why it's um, a crush. You know, you're not actively gonna slide into his DMs. <laughs> but there is one. He's a soccer player, and his name is Ruben Loftus Cheek. I don't know. Uh, Actually, I can probably look at it. I think he lives in the UK. How do you say his last um, name? It's uh, Loftus Cheek. Oh, I'm not even going to try and kill that one. Loftus Cheek? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, he plays, yeah, he lives in England, but he plays soccer. And, oh, uh, yeah, he's my crush for All sure. All right. Oh. What about a fighter crush? Um, oh my god. <laughs> Putting you on there blast. Are fighters that I, <laughs> there are fighters, fighters that I, like, think are attractive. But, like, having a crush on one, I don't know. Um, who are some that I find attractive? I'm trying to remember. I mean, you, I got, know. you I got your big up. buff guys. <laughs> you got your Francis Ninganos and your Stipe's. and then. Sometimes that way, like when we be at weigh-ins, like you would have to catch it really quick because someone will come out and you'll see their body and you're like, ooh. But then you have to like straighten your face because you don't <laughs> want the fans. Thank you. You don't want to pull a Joe Rogan looking at Misha Tate's butt, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, I don't. That's a hard job. Not you know, like all these shredded fighters, and you just got to be like eyes forward. That sounds like a hard job yeah. to me. Because people will. I remember I was talking to Joe Rogan on stage one time. Um, at the weigh-ins, and people were uh, not DMing me. They were mentioning me on Twitter nonstop, like, what were you saying to Joe Rogan? What were you and Joe Rogan talking about? I'm like, so God forbid I was staring one of the fighters down on the scale. They would be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we... <laughs> yeah, you have, like, a two-second conversation with Joe Rogan, and you guys are having a love affair in t on Twitter, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, huh. note to self, eyes forward, eyes forward. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting into the, the juicy stuff. I got to ask, where's uh, the craziest place you've ever had sex? I know you're like a shy girl, so I'm thinking you might. Actually, when it comes to sex, I'm pretty bold. Really? Like, yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm pretty much down for anything. But um, And I'm usually the one that initiates something if we're like in public or in some random place because I just <laughs> like to... I just like to be funny. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was hiking one time, and I did it on a hike. Oh, wow. That's like one of our, <laughs> our last guests, Paulina. She did it on a front yard. <laughs> just... Oh, yeah, I think I heard that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all yeah, right. No, I, we, were, we were hiking, and I said, you want to um, go, like, in that, there was, like, this little, it wasn't, like, a full-on cave obviously but there was like this little space where it was kind of covered uh -huh. and I said well, we got to make this quick and you know we just... <laughs> he's like can do <laughs> <laughs> wow it's like a zone over I said oh my god I'm gonna be caught 
lot. <laughs> so was this, did you lay down a blanket or did we have to make do? No, I just like leaned up against the rock and I just kind of like made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's awesome. So how did you learn about uh, sex growing up as a kid? Did you, did you have, you know, the parents like sit you down for that talk or, you know, did you watch a movie and realize like, oh, the stork doesn't bring babies that way? <laughs> Um, my, well, my mom and my grandma both had kids young. So like my mom had me when she was 17, that was her first born. And then my grandma had my dad when she was 16. Oh, so wow. uh, I kind of always, I wasn't, I kind of always like knew about it. And okay, I'm, this is going to sound crazy, but like I sometimes used to like sneak and watch <laughs> Isn't that crazy? All all kids are are curious, and I I found my dad's. It, I don't know if it was my dad or my stepmoms, and it's very different. But I found a book, and like I'm old enough to like read, obviously. And I remember opening the book, and it's like a novel, just you know, no pictures. But it was like yeah. an erotic novel, and it was just like you know, like I was like, oh my gosh, and like I stole the book, and I like was reading it under the covers, and then like put it back every day, and then would like, go steal it and read it under the, another chapter. <laughs> So yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, it was like so. You know how they used to like be on TV, and I didn't really know what it was, obviously. But I mean, I just would like watch him, and if I was, if someone would like come in, I would just like change the channel. But it wasn't like an all time thing. It was just maybe like once I had seen it on. But they they because they had kids young. Like my mom never really talked to me about it. I was I told her when I lost my virginity though. Um, I never told my grandma. <laughs> Even to this day, I'm like, she's never going to know. <laughs> like, right but, after it happened, you talked to your mom? You're like, Mom, I just had sex? Yeah. Aw. No, when... it, was, it, it was, like, yeah, it was it was pretty soon after. Like, I it, maybe that same week I had told her. When did you lose um, your virginity? Um, I was 16, which, looking back, like, I've always said, even after it happened, I was like, I, I always thought I would wait. Like, that was always my plan. I never planned to lose it that young. I wasn't it. And that's what I was um, saying is, like, be my grandma, because they had kids so young, I, they, my grandma was always really big on it. Like, we need, couldn't even start dating until we were 16, and we couldn't um, do <laughs> really anything. My grandma was really, really strict, and um, she would just always, the way that she talked about sex was, I'm like, oh, this is what happens, and then, like, she told us, but she'd be like, just don't do it, because you're going to get addicted, and it's not, and then you don't want to end up with babies, like, <laughs> Like she kept it real um, I guess <laughs> yeah but she was also very strict um but I did lose it and and I always said even before that I was always very much like a no girl like I didn't I wasn't like I said I was never boy crazy I wasn't just out here um it just kind of happened and I regretted it so much not because like I mean the guy was like in love with me and <laughs> so it wasn't some weird thing it was just I was like I feel like I'm way too young to be doing this and I I, was, I always thought I'd be at least out of high school um, that's shocking because when, I feel like when I was in high school and I'm a little older than you I'm 33 I know you're 26 right mm -hmm. and so I remember feeling this like crazy pressure in high school from all the kids like you know by by high school most of my friends had had sex and I hadn't. And so I was just like, oh, I got to lose my virginity. I got to lose it. I'm, I'm a, you mm -hmm. know, loser if I don't. And yeah, when I was like 15, almost 16, I lost it. But I felt like, and this is not why you want to lose your, it's not why you want to have sex, right? Because yeah. you feel like you have to do it. It should be something that you want to do. Um, but that's interesting because I feel like in high school, kids don't have that, like, that sense that you were like, you wanted to wait. Like not, not a lot of kids have that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what it, I don't know why it was, but I've always been super, super like independent and, and whatever I want, that's what I want. And that's what I'm going to get. Or if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. Like all my friends know this about me. If I don't want to do something, I won't do it. If I want to, then I will. It's just how I've always been. Um, and so when I lost, I was like, wow, you just kind of <laughs> did this and you knew you didn't want to. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, like I said, if I could go back and, and have waited, I would have, but, I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah, and do you want to have kids someday? I mean, I know you, your mom and your grandmother had kids early, and I was just thinking, is that something you want, or you're just like, eh, I'm good? Yeah, um, I want, like, three or four. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember when I was a little kid, my older brothers, their mom, 
um, she would always be like, listen, how many kids do you want? And I'd be like, 10, because I didn't know how people <laughs> were going to store houses in the world yet. Yeah. <laughs> 10. But, um, yes, I want, oh, uh, I cannot wait to have kids. Oh. But I also want to be, like, her, so. You also want to be what? married and things like that yeah yeah definitely i mean <clears throat> you're only 26 you got plenty of time yeah. and it sounds like you love traveling the world so <sighs> keep it in your pants no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so you said earlier something that kind of contradicted yourself you're like yeah i'm you know i don't i'm not like the person that approaches the guy you're like or maybe you mm -hmm. meant like when you were drinking that you're more aggressive towards the you know you'll start conversations and you're more personable when you're drinking is that what you meant yeah, I'm more, I'm definitely more personable when I'm drinking. Um, I'm nice. Like, if you're around me and you start talking to me, like, you, we, we'll be cool. But <laughs> I just am not going to go first. But even guys, like, I don't approach them first, even if I'm drunk. <laughs> even if I'm drunk. Um, it's just, like, I'm just more open. Like, I'll just, like, be making eye contact. Or, like, if you come up to me, I'll be more flirty. <laughs> um yeah. Does, does that so, transfer I mean, I to like the bedroom? Are you are you more open in the bedroom? Or are you a little bit more submissive or dominant? I'm I'm way more submissive because I'm super dominant personality. Like I um yeah I I'm very I'm like a, a major control freak and I am really strong and dominant naturally. So I don't like to be dominant at all. So what are some um, things that you like in the bedroom? Um, I love, well, I mean, I think a lot of men need to realize that foreplay is so important. Like, let's just put that out there. Mm -hmm. Guys, do not foreplay. <laughs> um, I like when men talk, like, super sexual. Like, I need it. Yeah. Talk just reckless. Just talk reckless. Dirty Don't talk. Don't my name, but, like, just, yes, I need it. Are um, you so open to dirty talk that you will allow for name calling? No. <laughs> no? Yeah. I let. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I let my boyfriend do it because we've established a very strong, you know, connection. We've been dating yeah. for close to two years now. And it's like, you know, yeah. like, I know that he doesn't really think that about me. But, like, in the moment, yeah. like, he'll call me, like, certain names. And I'm just like... My, I have like two sides to me like you know the the naughty sides like yeah call me a beggar you know yeah. whatever and then the other side's like oh. I'm like oh wait it's okay we're having sex <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me one time um and like we were both drunk and I just was like what did he say like and I didn't want to I'm not the kind of person that's gonna like ruin the moment so I usually just kind of go along with anything but I'm like yeah oh, but we're gonna talk about this <laughs> later for nothing. sure <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay, so it's a time of the show where we like to play a, something called the lightning sex round. Are you familiar with it? Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to name uh, one word or one phrase, and you just say yes or no, rapid fire, okay? Okay. All right. Here we go. Lightning sex round. Do you dirty talk in bed? That's a yes. Yes. <laughs> you spank or like to be spanked? Yes. Biting? Yes. Choking? Yes. Threesomes? No, no, never had one. Never had one. All right. Well, no. you're only 26. There's plenty of time. <laughs> do you watch? <laughs> do you watch porn still? <laughs> yes. Do you any foot fetishes like uh, feet? No. Or bodily fluids like a, like a golden shower? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> any? What about bondage like ropes and blindfolds? Sure, down for it. All right, butt stuff on you or a partner? Um, don't care for it. Do you but sex toys? Oh, all right. <laughs> Do you use sex toys? Uh, yeah. Ever been to a sex club or a swingers party? No. And are you a lingerie lover? Um, I just prefer to be naked. So <laughs> I mean, I have. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. I'm like, I will if it's requested of me, but yeah. I would just rather be naked. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you so much for playing the lightning sex round. <laughs> All right, we're yeah. going to move into the fuck, marry, kill game. Are you are you Ooh, ready? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This one was so hard because I wanted to give you some, like, something that, like, 
you know, pertain to what you do, but there's like obviously no male octagon boys, you know? So I was like, all right, I just chose uh, models slash beautiful men. And yours are Tyson Beckford, Fabio, (laughs) and Zoolander. So some are real models Uh and some are fake. (laughs) Who are you going to fuck? Who are you going to marry? And who are you going to kill? Okay, I'm going to fuck Tyson Beckford. Of course. You know what? I might fuck Fabio and marry Tyson Beckford. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And then um, kill (laughs) Zoolander. Yeah, that was a pretty easy one. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we have a couple fan questions, things to end the episode. And there's a lot, actually. Like, I tend to do, like, three or four, and we'll see how many we get through. Mm -hmm. But uh, these were so good. Um, Are you ready? Yeah. At I am Phil Jr., what body Mm -hmm. part, oh, sorry, body part that when touched turns her on the most? Ooh. See? Good ones. I'm like, good job, guys. (laughs) Yeah. Um... Probably my neck, yeah. but it would have to be like his. Yeah, you can't just flick you in the neck and be turned on, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's yeah, definitely erogenous zones. I feel like, right, the neck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at Larry underscore L three two one, do you miss crowds, mm-hmm. and are you looking forward to working arenas again? Yes, I'm so excited. I can't wait till um, we can have fans again. I actually have, it's really um, chill, like, not having the fans. Like, sometimes if you're not feeling like you look your best or you're not feeling too hot that day, it's, like, it's nice when there's not a bunch of people around. Mm -hmm. But I do miss them for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, for me as a fighter, it's a little different. I feel like um, I... Uh, feed off of that energy you know the yelling yeah. the screaming you know like it, it just yeah. pumps me up in a way that like, <clears throat> it's almost like a drug you know like you see the movies yeah. and like you know like everything kind of just like ho- like gets fuzzy around you and it, it's it's great yeah. it's an amazing feeling and oh yeah that energy is something different yeah and and fight fans you know they're kind of like no other right you know you get mm-hmm. they're definitely not golf fans that's for sure <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> they're awesome we love you guys <laughs> okay at Kur- uh, Kuriko I am Pac what was your first time being a ring card, card girl like um it was really the fight was really good um and we were in Kansas City so I mean it was weird because I was walking around with like Chrissy and people were stopping her and asking her for pictures. And I'm just like, what is going on? (laughs) And then everything just kind of felt like it moved so fast. And I was just like, wow, that was so crazy. Cause I didn't know anything going into it. I didn't know what lands would be like. I didn't know what the fight was going to be like. I had to ask them, I'm like, what do we do? Like no one kind of, it's kind of like win it. Like I, there was nothing that was told to me beforehand. So (laughs) it was, um, do you remember the actual so fighters that you held the cards up for? Like the actual fight? I know that um, Robert Whitaker was fighting. Okay. I know that Mighty Mouse was fighting. I know that... I'm trying to remember some of the other main card people. I can't remember, but I know for sure that they were on that card. Nice. Okay. This next question is awesome. We kind of touched on it earlier, but now you have to answer. Uh, at link underscore QWE, who do you think the most attractive female fighter is and the most attractive male fighter? Ooh. Yeah, so you get what female and male. Okay, you know who I always say every time I see her? Um, oh my God, is she Hawaiian? What is her name? Probably thinking of Rachel. Yes. <laughs> every time I see her, she's so beautiful. Rachel's a mega babe, yeah. <laughs> We had her uh, on the show. Okay, I thought so, because I was going to ask him, like, did you have her on here? Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. She's bad. she's a, a sweet girl. She was actually on the same fight card that I was on, our last card. And she's no longer oh, in really? the... Yeah, she's not in the, with the UFC anymore. That was her last fight. But who knows? You know, she okay. could work her butt off. She's a hard worker. She may get back, you know, win a few fights and come yeah. back. And then what about guys? 
Um, I'm trying to think. I can never remember. I'm like, there's one in my head. I just can't remember his name. That's the only part. That's why I didn't answer it earlier. Does there's have... like a few that I think are attractive, but um, there's one in particular I'm thinking about, and I can't remember his name. I, I feel like he's Brazilian. What's he look like? <laughs> but we... if I can think of it, I will say it before this call. Over, I <laughs> okay. All right. If you think about, tell us. Um, let's see. How about? Uh, shit I like with a C. <laughs> Some of these Instagram <laughs> names are funny. It's spelled C H I T I I I like. <laughs> shit I like. Um, is it hard <laughs> knowing you're the most attractive woman on the card? My oh. wife and I <laughs> wish you were on every card. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't think about that. So I'm not like, yeah, I'm here, bitches, and I'm the finest one here. <laughs> that would be so cool. Um, I think the girls that I work with are super beautiful. So I don't ever, like, I don't know. I don't, we don't ever really think about, like, like, who's the best looking one or anything like that. But, I mean, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, it would take a lot of uh, confidence being like, oh, I'm the most beautiful bitch here. <laughs> <laughs> if you were like oh my god yeah you probably <laughs> wouldn't be a very nice person <laughs> no. okay uh actually this next question uh you answered earlier at munya moon shadow ever been with a couple hmm. <laughs> oh you know what i think if this is the same person i'm thinking of i've been asked this a few times on, when i do the q a's on my story um no i haven't um like i said i'm not really like opposed to them but i'm also i've also never like been with a girl so I don't know how much fun I would be in that yeah <laughs> you're like oh <laughs> but you, but you're open to it so I think that's what the yeah. fans want to hear that's their fantasy yeah. <laughs> all right last question uh at Jordan Rafe photography weirdest fan attempt to win your affection oh the weirdest wow <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, I don't really get, like, weird. I mean... No one, like, painted their body, marry me Brooklyn, or anything like that? <laughs> no. Stuff I don't know. I can't think of it. I get, like, weird dudes, but I've never had, like, someone go out of their way to do anything, like, crazy. Yeah. All right. You guys <laughs> yeah, they need to step it up. <laughs> well, I, I want to ask you a question about, like, let's say there's someone who's aspiring to be in your position, whether it's, you know, mm -hmm. the level of modeling that you've got to or an octagon girl. What advice would you give someone? Because, I mean, I can't even imagine the modeling industry. Like, I'm a, I'm a professional fighter, but, it, it, you know, I, I know it's like a completely different world of, like, dedication and sacrifice and all these things. But, um, you know, it's hard to summarize. But if you would give a girl or a guy as an up-and-comer who might want to be an octagon girl or get into modeling, um, some good advice. Yeah, uh, this is cool because I actually get DMs about this a lot. Um, I, I'm i probably actually one of the worst people to ask because of how I got hired. <laughs> it was <laughs> You're like, oh. just bartending, cross your fingers. <laughs> yeah, I, like, it's, um, I think that um when the time is right if if you are trying to do it like I would just say you have to 100% be confident in yourself like and this is just general advice you just be confident or like fake that confidence until you make it um be kind to people because that energy will always come back to you um treat people well and just like and work hard at whatever it is that you want because, like I said, it, it may not come in the way that you want it. Like, I never thought I'd be a UFC main girl. Um, but I've always, like, I've put in so much work behind the scenes that people will just never understand. It's, it's stuff that I don't even show on social media, stuff that I don't even talk about, stuff that it, only the people closest to me really understand how much work I've put in. And I feel like that just kind of came back to me in the form of my job. Yeah. Um, so I feel like just, you know, work hard at whatever it is that you're doing. Be kind and 
and be confident. I love that. And that's, we'll get that's awesome. Yeah, something I like to say towards the end of each episode is, you know, be be kind, be grateful, but don't take shit from anyone, right? <laughs> so you got to, yeah, love yourself and own it, but stand up for yourself also. Well, that's for pretty sure. much it. We, where can we find you on all the social medias and your OnlyFans account? Um, my social my Instagram is Brooklyn underscore Ren. It's at B R O O K L I Y N. Yeah, that's don't get the so spelling funny. wrong, guys. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brooklyn with um, an I, guys. Yeah, L I Y N underscore Ren. Um, my Twitter is Hello Brooklyn, um, which is a song by Daisy Wayne, and I feel like it's my theme song of life. Oh, <laughs> and nice. so that's been my Twitter name since like in high school um <laughs> and then my only fans as well is just my name too it's just brooklyn Ren, no space got it and all that will be in the episode notes guys if you want to check her out um one question we ask all the guests who would you like to hear on the show next could be a, a fighter Ooh. could be a girl could be a guy could be you know an exec somebody that you know is in the fight scene or not in the fight scene anyone mm -hmm. See, I would love to hear um, either one of my one of my girls, one of the other Octagon girls, because they have they have some stories. Mm. <laughs> who would who would be uh, the best on the show? Who would be the most open? Oh my God, I, <laughs> any honestly, you could get any of them, and you would hear some of the fun, the most funny and fun stories. <laughs> uh, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like any of them that you could ask, you, you would have a good time. Okay. Um, or I feel like one of the um, like commentator guys would be fun, or like one of the commentator women, like a like um, which well, one? We I'm had we had Laura Senko on. She was fun. Ooh. Yeah, maybe like uh, I would love Megan O'Leary or Heidi Andrew. Yeah. They'd be really fun. Yeah. And you know what? The guys, it's funny. Like, it's been harder to get the guys to come on as opposed to the girls. And you'd think really? it would be the opposite, right? Like, guys are like, oh, I'll talk about my dick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, they don't want to talk. <laughs> so, yeah, the girls. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will um, try not to creepily slide into the, uh, the other girls' DMs, the other Octagon <laughs> girls. But maybe we can get one of them on here. You've been super awesome. Thank you for showing us a side that not a lot of people get to see, you know, and I know you've been doing beauty pageants since you were nine and modeling. And there's that phrase, um, every overnight success put in years and years of work before they got successful. Yeah. And that's you. And, yeah. and I, I really, really respect you, what you do. And you're not just a pretty face. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. And we'll, we'll uh, talk to you soon. And I'm very sad you didn't tell us your cutest or your uh, your fighter pick. I know oh, you know. I know, I know you know. <laughs> no. Um, okay, I'll say one that I do think is, like, attractive. This isn't one I was thinking about. But I do find Israel out of so attractive. Okay, okay, Izzy. I mean, and how oh. good of a fighter he is, right? It's like, yeah. you can be like, uh, in my opinion, you can be like a... A solid six and then if you're like an amazing fighter i'm like boop 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 <laughs> like, you're at eight <laughs> but you know i actually don't like um people who are cocky at all so i'm like if you're just like cocky i'm like oh never mind i don't even i'm not even a fan right now yeah. but if i meet with a person and you're really nice i'm like okay never mind <laughs> yeah yeah that's it and you i think you and i both know that there's a demeanor a character uh you know like that alter ego that we we're talking about that you have to play up so you're like all right i get it you know you're being a little extra cocky yep. for a reason <laughs> okay well thanks for coming on the show and um good luck with the the rest of the year and hopefully we get to be on the same card yes <laughs> okay thanks brooklyn talk to you soon thank you bye bye that was an awesome interview. I'm super happy that she came on the show. You know, it, it's it's nice to have a, a wide variety of guests on here. You know, sometimes we're going to bring you fighters. 
sometimes will bring you the pretty girls who hold up the ring card, uh, the cards and walk around the octagon. And next week, we're going to bring you the people who report on the crazy sport that we love so much. Be sure to check out next Friday's episode. We have MMA journalist Helen Yi and her partner, the Schmo. We'll talk about uh, everything from MMA journalism to how they got together and their love life and their sex life. So, you know, guys, I know dating is draining and relationships are hard you know just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean you know that's it it's the easy part it's going to be hard forever but i truly think that the magic of human connection is worth it and whether you guys are trying to connect with yourself on some self love that's okay as well if you're just dating and if you are already in a relationship i really wish the best for you guys and don't forget to check out our youtube now it's uh, going to be in, in the link in the show notes. You can now see and hear the episodes. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's show with me, Rebel Girl. And remember, always be kind, be grateful, but don't take shit from anyone. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and for all your fan questions as always. And a special thank you to audio engineer DJ Zoll at DJ Zoll. Tomorrow Kids Studio at Tomorrow Kids Official. Producer Nate Jackson at Nate Adamus. And you can find us on Instagram at Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl. And myself at Ashley 